If you're having issues with bad data or simply want to ensure that you don't, this handy feature will help you out. Welcome to QuickBase Junkie. I help QuickBase builders learn fast to deliver more. Custom data rules allow you to write your own error messages and customize them like never before using simple if statements. For this example, I'm using an app from the App Exchange called the Simple Project Manager. Now, I do use this app a lot, so there are probably some changes in here from other demos that I've done from the original, but more or less, it's just the same. I'm going to head over to our task table. And this is where I want to create our custom data rules. These rules allow me to set up my very own error messages, which means that when something isn't quite right, I can display to my user exactly what the problem is. So let's say I'm having an issue with people entering a finish date before the start date. Clearly this would be an issue, but without some sort of data rules or validation in place, this could go on unchecked for who knows how long. There is an option to potentially add some form rules, but that only would apply to that particular form when it's being used, not when something like grid edit is being used. So what we want to do is ensure that even when grid edit is being used, that these rules are being followed. So to write our custom data rules, we're going to jump into the settings for the table. Once in our settings, We'll scroll all the way down to our advanced settings. Once again, scroll down to the advanced table settings section and you'll see the option to build custom data rules for this table. And there's also the spot where you can turn them on or turn them off. So even if you have them written, you don't necessarily have to have them turned on or engaged until you are ready. So we're going to go ahead and check that box because we will be ready as soon as we get this going. So for our very first rule, I'm just going to pop in my formula. Every formula you use in here is going to be your if formula. So if this, then this. Basically what we're saying is if this condition is true, then there is an error and I want you to display this error message. Otherwise, let things be. There's no error, right? No problem, let the, uh, the record be saved. So now I've got my if statement, right? Starting with my if, and then within the parentheses, I'm gonna have my condition that I wanna check for. So now I've got my finish date, right? My field for finish date less than my start date. Now, it just so happens that start date is of a particular format called work date, so I need to convert it. You may or may not need to make that type of conversion to date, but essentially we're saying if the finish date is earlier than the start date, we got a problem. If that is true, then I want to display this message to my users stating that the finish date cannot be before the start date. That way they know where to focus and what they need to fix specifically. All right, let's go ahead and save this. Exit back out to our report. And because one of the great things about these custom data rules is that they will apply even when you are in grid edit, I'm going to pop into grid edit because it'll make making updates and changes really easy, really fast. And I'm just going to set a start date to be before, or sorry, a finish date to be before the start date. Uh, you notice the dates in here are really, really old. That's because, again, this app came from the App Exchange and it was written quite a while ago, but it really helps to demonstrate a lot of these use cases. So I'm going to move that before the start date and try to save. It's not letting me save and it's showing me why, right? exactly that message that we gave saying the finish date cannot be before the start date. How awesome is that? Now I want to show you a few more things. So we're going to jump out of here and go back into our advanced settings. You may already be thinking to yourself, well, that's well and good, but what if there are multiple conditions that I want to set 
and I want to check for multiple things. No problem whatsoever. Just like you can with a standard formula using the if statement, you can actually, uh, I don't want to quite say nest, but daisy chain these together. So let's say we also want to ensure that the number of hours allocated to this particular task is always greater than one, right? There's a minimum of one hour, paste this in here, a minimum of one allocating hour uh, that must be associated with any task. So I'll just add that on to my formula. The very next condition of number of hours allocating is less than one, right? If that's true, if it's true that it's less than one, then there's an error. You know, make note of that. For me particularly, I feel it's like a little bit backwards, right? Because I want to create the true condition for the error and not the true condition for the non-error. So in this case, number of hours less than one, and then I set my message, right? A minimum of one hour must be allocated. I'll save that and let's take a look. Go into my grid edit so we can peek at this really quick. Okay, I'm gonna try that again. Let's say I'm gonna make this 0.5 hours. Now, I didn't have that in there before, that validation rule, so it allowed the zero hour and then I'm also going to change this to earlier. And let's go ahead and change another record. I'm going to make this one 0.5 hours as well. Let's see what happens. Okay. The first one errored on the finish date, and the second one errored on those minimum number of hours. But we know that the first one here actually has an issue with both. But like in any if statement, it's going to find the very first instance that is true and will give you that result. So because the first one that we wrote was relating to the finish date before the start date, it erred on that first for this first record and then erred on the other error for the second record. Now this might be an issue. You might want to say, well, I want to be able to tell them that this record had both errors. We can do that too. Go ahead and cancel this. If you want to be able to stack those errors, so that way, let's say you don't want someone just fixing the first error only to get a second error after that, right? You want to tell them in advance, what are all the errors you need to fix? Okay, back on our formula. Now we want to add a combined error, right? So the first thing we want to check for are both of these issues present or errors present in the record. So I'm just going to copy what I've got here. And I'm going to throw this into a set of parentheses and say, and let's grab my second one here, throw it into a set of parentheses. So what I'm saying now is if the finish date is before the start date, and the number of hours allocating is less than one, then I want to display a message. I'm going to copy this message. And add in this message. Finish with our comma. So we will check first to see if those two conditions combined are true and then move on to checking if the finish date uh, is before the start date, and then check for the number of allocatings is less than one. So that way I can check all of my conditions. Now this may or may not be feasible if you've got a lot of different conditions that you want to check for, but it's certainly possible. I also want to say before we move on that because this is a formula field, it is so, so powerful. I'm just using simple less than, um, actually I think I'm only using less than here, but less than, greater than, equal to, but you could also use things like contains or start with, starts with, gosh, using all of the different formula functions that are available to you and are super, super powerful. You can write these formulas and really hone in on what you wanna make sure you're validating in terms of the quality of the data entered into your QuickBase apps. So I'll save this. Now back on my grid edit. Okay, 
Let's make this 0.5, change this again to too early, and then we'll change another one here just to see how multiples show up. Um, okay, and I'll click Save. Okay, now we can see that very first message was that combined dual message for both the finish date cannot be before the start date and a minimum of one hour must be allocated. And then the other two skipped that one because both conditions weren't true and then landed on the minimum of one hour must be allocated. I can see which records highlighted in bright red need to be updated in order for this grid edit to save. If I hover over this part on the left, we get the message of what was wrong. A little bit is cut off, it might be because I'm zoomed in, but you can see what the error was for that particular row. And once you fix these things, then those errors are gonna go away, right? They're gonna be okay. Um, now, it's allowing me to go back to zero because that was the original value. Because I'm implementing this after the fact, you might wanna watch for that because it's not gonna double check existing errors. It's only gonna double check those new errors. And uh, let's change this to after, just so I can show you that this does work. And that actually I think was the original value. I'll click save and it saves no problem. Let's see what these error messages look like inside the record, on a form, on any form. Again, these data validations will apply no matter what, regardless of what form you're on or whether you're using grid edit or any other report. So if I make my change here, I'll make this one um, 0.5 and I'll make our start date again before our other date try to save and boom it's going to tell me what that error message is that minimum of one hour must be allocated and I, <laughs> I thought I was on a different record so I didn't get that finish date notification um, let me go ahead and change this one let's see if I make this 15 that will definitely be before saving again and we get that other error message so no matter where you are it's going to validate the data and ensure the integrity and quality of the data that you have. One last note I wanna say, if you enjoyed watching me use Grid Edit and are interested in other ways that you can really get the most out of Grid Edit beyond just these custom data rules, I invite you to check out the ultimate Grid Edit guidebook, which can be found at quickbasejunkie.com slash grid edit. And I've got pages and pages of shortcuts and tips and strategies for using grid edit that will really help you get the most out of that super valuable tool that you can use to quickly update, enter, and modify your data in QuickBase. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe using the link below. You can also drop me a comment and let me know what you thought and what you enjoyed the most. And then head over to quickbasejunkie.com to grab one of those free downloads. Bye for now using the link below, using the link below. Bye for now.